Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on uh, Graphic 45 Alice's Tea Time. Is that right? Or Time for Tea. I'm, I keep getting that out of order. So this is kind of a complicated page. So um, I, I have the cut list down in the description, but I would really recommend that you guys sort of watch the video um, first and then come back and start the build um, because we're going to go back and forth between installing interactive components and design paper because there's some layering and that's going to make a little bit more sense um, in just a minute. Okay, so I had laid these out. Let me show you what we're going to do on my maca. So I've got, actually those are inside inserts. We've got two flaps on top with a pocket for the pocket and then this opens again to a belly band so that's what we're going to be working on and this is kind of just where I'm planning on putting magnets that might get fine-tuned a little bit later so there is I know it's hard to see a belly band here there's an insert here a top flap and a pocket here. So there's a lot going on on this page. So now that you kind of have the end in mind, let's get started. So we're going to um, take the first flaps and um, put them inside um, a half inch from the edge of each side. And we're going to use this pattern, which is from the 12 by 12 patterns and solids. So we're gonna lay that down first, then we're gonna add our flap a half inch in so it's going to slightly overlap this strip and that's why I want to put the strip in first. And I'm going to be careful not to get too much glue and this is um, just an 8 by 8 by 10 pocket page so that it doesn't squish everywhere. There it is. The tip is a little bit dry. A little heavy here. I know that's going to get covered with paper. There's that dry blob on the end. Okay, so we're going to put this on either end. And I like to pull the end toward me so I can center it top to bottom. Now because this is a half inch and then we immediately get it wet with glue, it, it may want to wobble. So I'm doing my best to get it in as straight as possible. And that looks pretty good. You got a little bit of time to do some nudging. Okay, we're gonna do the other side. Then we're gonna go back to adding interactive elements. Again, a little heavy on the ends. So this strip is a half inch wide. And I'm coming in a 16th inch from the edge, which is what my borders are gonna be, consistently be. Okay, so there we go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install left and right hand flap like so. And it's going to come in a half inch. I'm going to use my grid to help me with this. And I'm going to put some weight on top of this pocket page to sort of hold it in place. And I'll use my undo and lay it down like that. And that's just to keep it from nudging around. So these need to come in a half inch and I'm going to use my grid to help me judge that half inch. Let me tell you what size these are. These are four and seven eighths by eight inch, four and seven eighths by eight. You're gonna need two, one for the left and one for the right. Okay, again, I'm gonna use my grid to help me get this lined up. I like to tap, tack one corner down sort of use it as my pivot point. I should have probably gone the other way. Tack the top down, that way I can see to wiggle it around on this side.
Okay, there we go. Looks good. It's a little bit sticking out there. I'm going to um, trim that little bit off. It's a little fussy, but you can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna do something a little different this time. I'm gonna turn it this way. It's the same thing. You just need to move it up a half inch, right? And this is actually easier for me to see. So I'm lining up my grid. Use a little bit of weight here. And I'm looking for my half inch mark here. And I think this is a lot easier to see. Should have thought of it sooner. I normally bring my edges to me. I'm going to hold that pivot point while I get it off my finger. Oh, that was much easier. Yeah. And look, look how good I, I got it in. So I would recommend doing that on both sides. So there we go. So that is in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add two additional strips right here because the flap that goes on top of this is going to be inset a little bit too. So we are going to, I'm checking to see how these look. Because if I'm going to do any trimming, I'm going to do that before I add uh, this strip. Everything looks pretty good. Actually, I thought I was over, but it looks good. Yep, top to bottom looks good. Okay, now we're going to add this strip. This is also a half inch. Now it's going to come in just a sixteenth of an inch off the square line of that first flap. Like so, okay? So we're going to do one on each side, left and right. And the reason I want, I think you guys should watch it first is the cut list is a little bit, I mean, I give you all the cuts, but it's a little bit confusing um, to know what's going on top of what. And if you watch this, looking at the cut list will make, a, I think, a lot more sense. And I don't give you the instructions to add these strips first. They're not required. Um, it's just the way I wanted to design it. Um, but if you don't want these little strips sticking out, or if you don't want to fight trying to tuck it in when you add your flap, I highly recommend adding them now. I've done it both ways. Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing on the side. Sorry, you can hear my laundry in the background. My husband's been gone a few days. He just got back, so he's trying to catch up on some things. Okay, so I hope everybody's having a good new year. January 1st. Okay, just wiggling that into place. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add two more flaps. A left and a right, like so. Now, these flaps are four and a quarter by eight. Four and a quarter by eight. You're going to score half inch on the four and a quarter inch side. Now, these are going to come in a quarter of an inch. And I know that sounds a little bit complicated, but actually, let me think about that. What am I doing? Actually, we're going to add two blue, two half inch blue strips on the inside first. And then basically what we're gonna to try to do is, it'll be easier to center. This flap is getting centered on this flap. Is that right? Let me think about that. Yes, it is. Okay, never mind. That's easy enough. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the center line here and the center line here, we're gonna mark and we're gonna lay them in. And that's how we'll know how far to cover up this. So this is four and a quarter. So that's two and one eighth is gonna be the center point. This is my handy dandy Tim Holtz. And double check my measurement. That's right. If you don't have um, a, a center ruler, then two and a quarter or two and one eighth is where you're going to want to come in from either side, and that'll be the middle. And then this is four and seven eighths. So the center line for that is going to be. It's hard to do visually because I've got color on here. I keep wanting to stop here. Don't do that. Get the center line for the whole flap, which is two 
quarter. Okay, this one's a little more challenging because it's two and three sixteenths. Is that right? Yeah, two and three sixteenths. There's my center line. Do that over here. It would have been easier to mark the center line on this before the um, colored paper got added. It's visually a little bit confusing, but two, three sixteenths. Am I getting that right? Yeah, it looks like it. So the center is going to look like it's off, but it's not. Okay, let's go ahead and add those blue strips in real quick. Be right back. Okay, I forgot. I'm going to back up a little bit. So this is where we left. I was going to put these two blue strips here. That's not right. What we're going to do is... Um, <laughs> we're going to add... I'm sorry, I'm struggling. We're going to add a pocket here and here. Okay. So let's get our pockets out. Okay, there's going to be a pocket on the left and a pocket on the right. So they're going to open this way. And then we're going to put a flap on top of it. And that's why I was getting confused. So the, the pattern blue paper is actually going to go on the pocket, not on the flap. Okay, so you're going to need two of these. And they are three and a quarter, three and a quarter this way by nine inches. So you're going to score at a half inch and eight and a half, and then you're gonna rotate it 45 degrees and score a half inch on one side. Doesn't really matter which side. So in the end, three of the four sides are gonna be scored half inch and miter the corners, tape it all together. It's gonna to go vertical and the open part of the pocket is going to be facing away from the center of the page. Okay, glad I went back and looked at my mock-up. It's really easy to get uh, confused. Okay. So I'm just going to dry fit these real quick and see if one, and let me get, let me get a white paper so you can see better what I'm doing. I'm going to put this on the inside. Um, so I'm dry fitting my pocket top to bottom to see how it's fitting. If one fits better on one panel versus the other, then I'll swap them out. This one looks nice and clean. So what is this? So I'm going to put them in as, as is. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't grab it. There we go. Okay. Okay, now this is going to go flush on the center edge of the flap going away from the center is the way the pocket is going to function. Okay, I'm going to turn it around this way, open this up so I can see left to right. It's hard to tell but I hold it um, off the paper about 30 degrees um, before I center it and then press it into place. Okay, we're going to do that one more time this way. Here's my pocket. Again, three and a quarter by nine, three and a quarter by nine. You're gonna score three of the four sides to make a pocket. So that's half inch, eight and a half, rotate 45 degrees, score half inch. I put those instructions in uh, the cut list as well. It's pretty obvious which sides to score when it's a pocket like this, but there's going to be a pocket on the very top that looks almost square. So I'm made sure to point out which of the two sides need to be scored 
separate from the bottom piece. So hopefully that will help you guys. Okay. Again, the scored edge of the finished prod, um, pocket is going on the edge of the flap, the open edge of the flap. Okay, there we go. Now we can add our blue. And instead of just doing a strip, because it's a pretty shallow pocket, I'm just gonna cover the whole pocket in this checkered. And it looks like it is two, two and three quarters. So I'll be right back. Okay, so the reason I'm doing it this way is I want this pattern here so that when I go to add my top flap, um, I can see that the amount of space on both sides is about equal and it should be about a quarter inch in. So a quarter inch in from the edge of the score line and a quarter inch in from the edge of the flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover these and I just think visually it'll make it a little easier to look at than two layers of black trying to center it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. To everyone and of course that means my center line doesn't mean anything because I put a pocket on top of it oh but wait but wait let's pull the mock-up back up do I need a magnet I do so let's think about that okay let's hmm quarter inch okay so I know Let's do this visually. I know I want to put the magnet underneath this panel. So I know I'm going to, let's go to the edge. So the edge of this pocket is now lined up right here. And I'll put my ruler down so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'm using this as the edge of my pocket. I know I'm going to come in a half inch, I mean a quarter inch, and that's probably going to be the start of where my flap is. So that means I need to come in probably a half inch more. So I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch from the edge of my flap, and that's where I'm gonna place my magnet in center. So I'm gonna to go to the three quarter inch line. And of course, this is a lot easier to figure out if you put the top flap in first, but I really wanna um, use that pattern to help me see what I'm doing. So I need to put a magnet right about there. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. And I wanna come in far enough away from the edge that I don't have to worry about any interference here um, covering the, the uh, pocket, but I also know that the edge of the flap that I'm getting ready to install is only gonna come a quarter inch from, from here. So you can see, if I come in a quarter inch, I'm still well within um, being able to cover up the magnet on the opposite side. Okay, I'm gonna get my fat tape. And I'm just visually marking the center line. This is not going to be color blocked, so it doesn't matter. And I'm also not planning on color blocking the inside of the panel that I'm gonna place right here. So this is more than likely gonna be solid. And if I do decide to color block, it will be strips on the top and the bottom, not in the middle. Okay, here we go. We can go ahead and cover this up with that paper now. Now, of course, the other way to do it would have been get the uh, layer the second flap on, then add the pocket. I'm gonna get some paper under both edges so I can see where the pocket stops and starts. And I get a nice even border. Which I did not. I don't know why it's so off. I don't know if it's the pocket or the paper. But I'm gonna try to flip it over and see if it fits better. Sometimes it does, I don't understand it. But... 
yeah, it does. And see, that's a little high here. That makes no sense to me why that would fit better one way than the other, but it did. So I'll take it. Okay. It looks pretty good. Oops. Okay, so that's in. We're going to do the same thing on this side. Put this here to remind me it goes on the flap that goes on top. So we're gonna we're in a position now where we can add that flap. So let's do that and then we'll go to the other side. So this flap is going to get centered. We should have about a quarter inch on either side. And that looks like it's right on the money. So we'll take off the tape. I'm gonna turn it sideways like I did um, for the other flap. It's just easier for me to see. There we go. Okay, move along, right along. Let's get my magnets lined up for this one. And I'm just gonna visually go off where this one's located. I think it's gonna be close enough. So we put all the effort into measuring that one. We'll get the benefit of that here. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I use the tape on top to sort of soften the edges. Um, the edges are quite um, square. They drop straight down. There's no bevel to the magnet. So it can show up underneath um, paper, uh, particularly something that's not patterned. The more pattern you have, the, the more hidden it is. Also, I find that the glue doesn't dry very well on um, the magnet itself. So the tape helps uh, keep your paper in place. So it's a little of both. I'm gonna use my sheet here and then I've got another sheet here. This pattern is weird because it's not exactly on. <laughs> I think it's supposed to be that way, the Alice in Wonderland thing and all, but it's driving my eyes crazy because I want to try to create right angles and you, you really can't. Okay. Unless you cut the pattern off in the first place, but if you cut it to how it comes in the package, it's slightly skew. So there we go, that's a lot of pattern. Okay, now I'm going to add this so I don't forget to add my uh, magnet on the flap. So we're ready to go ahead. We've already got this flap in. I'm going to put the tape on it and mount it to the other side. And then we will continue working on interactive elements. Okay, now we have another flap to add right here. And I have to find it. Okay, so as a reminder, this is four and a quarter by eight. Four and a quarter by eight, you're gonna score a half inch on the four and a quarter inch side. You're gonna line your uh, pocket page up on your grid and or use your ruler and come in a quarter inch on the peach orange color. And basically what you're trying to do is center this flap um, center this flap on this flap. So you should come in a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here and that should be right. But I should dry fit that one more time. I'm gonna see how it, how it looks. So I'm, I'm putting the black piece right on the inch line, coming in a quarter inch, quarter inch, and it's right. So now that I know that this way, coming up a quarter inch is gonna work, I can pull it to me and just use the grid this way. And trust that I'm gonna land in the right spot. Okay. 
I know you guys are seeing the top of my head, but it's, uh, oops, my, my page nudged. Okay, and of course all of this can be accomplished by using a ruler and just putting a tick mark on either end. Okay, there we go. So I need to adhere this magnet. I gotta go let my dog out, I'll be right back guys. Okay, sorry about the interruption, I'm back. Okay, so the next thing, so we've got our two flaps in and then it's actually a total of four flaps, two on each side. Now we're gonna add our pockets. These are uh, four and three quarter inches wide by four and a half inches deep. So you're going to, on the four and three quarter inch side, you're gonna score a half inch and then four and a quarter. Half inch, four and a quarter, rotate 45 degrees and score half inch. You're gonna do that twice, one for the left and one for the right. And I've been shuffling paper so much I don't know where my other pocket is. It's around here somewhere, I'll locate it. Let's go ahead and get this one in. Pick tool. I think I dry fit these. Yep. Um, so you want to make sure it fits on your panel and that it's not sticking over the edge because it'll make it hang up when you open it. So do kind of a test here. And if it's sticking out, you might need to make it a little bit smaller or nudge it toward the center because then it won't interrupt opening the panel. I um, dry fit it and it, it, for me, um, it worked fine, but it's always good to test it. Everybody's trimmers behave slightly differently and as well as where your score lines hit. Um, a half inch on your scoreboard, you know, maybe 15 sixteenths instead of 16 sixteenths. You know what I'm saying? Or... Did I say that right? No, I said it wrong. Okay, so this is going to get installed right here. Get flush with the bottom. And I'm gonna line up the hinge side of the flap and the pocket and then install it that way. And this one I'm gonna go that way. And that way, like I said, I won't have it won't interfere when I'm opening it. I'm sure that I'm outside of that score line. Now, the next thing is the second pocket, which is right over here for some reason. Okay, again, this is four and three quarters wide by four and a half inches tall or deep. You're going to score a half inch and then four and a quarter inch. Rotate 90 degrees, score a half inch. This one's a little more critical because it's almost square, so it's really easy to kind of get mixed up on which sides. It's um, thinner than it is tall when it's finished. Ah! Ah! No! Say it isn't so! How come it's so sticky when you don't want it to stick? Luckily, that wasn't designer paper. Okay, so again, I'm going to line up this corner first. The outside edges of the flap, where the score is. And then push down and across, like so. And you can see this is actually sticking out a little bit. I didn't dry fit it. Oh, that's because it shifted. I need to lift that and try it. Try again. I'm going to use my undo and lift that. So for those of you who have not seen me do the undo, I'm going to do it for you right now. So what you want to do is you want to find um, the closest level of paper to the tape. So if I go here, it's got to go through this top and through the hinge before it gets to the tape. If I do the undo on this side, it goes straight through this layer to the tape. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on this side. And if you haven't worked with undo, it is a miracle. So then I also have a little bit on this side, right? It's very, very thin, very, very thin. So you put it on and then you exercise some patience. Let it soak in a little bit. And then I can straighten this out. So 
I use a painter spatula because it's the thinnest tool that you can get um, as far as a spatula. It's considerably thinner um, than the spatula that comes with most of the die cutting machines. So this is just something I had left over because I used to paint a lot and I don't anymore because I do this. So once, once it gets, a, you can see just within a few minutes, but it does need those few minutes, the tape is going to lift away and release from the side that you applied the undo on. So it's not coming off the um, this side of the pocket, it's coming off the side I applied the undo to. Mm -hmm. Did I get enough on here? I didn't come up far enough, so I'm gonna add a couple drops. Now the, the next thing you need to be patient with is you need to give all of this time to dry, and then you can actually use the same tape and the same uh, pocket but it has to be completely dry. Um, otherwise, you're, it's just gonna shift around because of the undo. Okay, not quite ready. There we go. So if you take a close look, um, the tape um, lifted a little bit on the pocket page, but you can see there's no residual paper. It, it pretty much came off clean anywhere that there was the undo. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to let that dry and we're going to move along. Okay. It didn't feel like it was grabbing, but it is. Okay. So the next thing we're going to cover is we're going to open this up, go back to the inside. And after this dries, we'll go ahead and install that. You have two inserts. Um, they're going to be the same size, three and three quarters by seven and a half three and three quarters by seven and a half and that's what's going to go in these pockets and be careful that it doesn't get hung up on that half inch score down there so three and three quarters by seven and a half and i um that's the wrong one i used my three and a half there it is um stub maker and these inserts I'm shuffling around because these inserts are a lot, little bit larger than the ones that are gonna go in these pockets. Now the ones that go in this pocket are three and a half by seven, three and a half by seven, they go in these pockets, okay? I did the same thing, I used the stub maker. I do wanna share with you, if you have the Graphic 45 die, um, you can do something a little bit more decorative. I opted not to, um, but the Graphic 45 tag and die set, you could use that um, to cut the top part with a die if you wanted to make it a little bit fancier. I decided to stick with this just because it's faster. Um, I like die cut edges, but when I'm under schedule constraints, I tend to go as simple as possible, which, which is rectangular and a couple of punches here and there. Okay, so you'll need two of those three and a half by seven and a half. They're gonna go in the pockets. So I am... Three and a half by seven and a half. One of these is, yeah, this one had the beginning of my cut list on it, so I don't want to use that one. So I'm going to go ahead and chomp my corners real quick as we continue to wait for this to dry. And then I'm going to take a quick break and we are going to get our papers, our designer papers lined up. I have some of them ready, but uh, I need to organize a little better. Again, there's our two inserts. Okay, I'm gonna take a break, let this dry. When I come back, we're gonna continue working. I'm still going back and forth about whether or not we need a magnet on the inside. Um, I'm just not sure. Oh yeah, there's one more piece too, and I haven't cut it yet. There's gonna be a belly band here. And the reason I haven't trimmed that out yet is because I don't know how wide I want it to be. It's definitely gonna be wide enough to cover this seam here, but I don't know if I'm gonna do two, two and a half. Um, belly band and then we're gonna have a nice huge insert here okay I'll be right back hey everyone okay I'm back we're gonna get a couple of pieces laid down <laughs> like I said this is kind of um, a complicated one there's just a lot of moving parts and then a lot of pieces that we're gonna be working on um, 
and I'm shedding. Sorry about that. This is from the 12 by 12 collection, and I went back and forth about which pattern, and I think I'm going to go with this. It's going to be the back uh, drop of the pocket, and then we're going to have an insert in here. So let's go ahead and get these down. This is going on the top flap. And I, I cut these about a quarter inch uh, bigger than they, longer than they need to be, taller, so that they'll slip inside the pocket. I'm having such a hard time seeing. I ordered some new glasses, they're not here yet. I'm, I'm really hard on my glasses. I think I've got scratch lines all over them, so everything looks blurry at night, no matter what I do. So hopefully they'll be here before I finish this album. See how they do. Okay, looks good. Okay, the pocket is going to be this pattern, which is from the eight by eight collection pack. Eight by eight collection pack. So just to recap, these two outside strips are from the twelve by twelve patterns and solids. Same here. This is also from the patterns and solids, which is a twelve by twelve pack. This is from the eight by eight. So I've been hemming and hawing about this because I'm thinking about um, doing some color blocking here. So I'm going to hold off on this for a second. And then I'm going to share with you what our inserts are going to look like. So I'm using the same pattern on the insert at the top of this tag. And so what I did was cut a one inch strip. This is just a one inch strip and I, um, Use the chopper to cut the corner, so I'm going to go ahead and add it to the top. Okay. And then I'm using this um, very fine strip from the 12 by 12 collection pack, and it says, uh, always time for tea. Now, if you've got the sticker sheet, this there's a sticker that's also uh, the same thing, but I, I decided to cut it off the 12 by 12 um, uh, collection pack, but you, there is a sticker. Uh, and I didn't use the sticker because I wasn't sure how I was gonna divide it up. Um, but like I said, I went ahead and used this from the 12 by 12 collection pack and cut this decorative strip off. If I had it to do over again, I'd probably use a sticker. Save some time. And you get the same look. Okay. And that just gives a nice little break right there. So now what I haven't decided is what's gonna go on the second half of this. Originally I had planned to have the pattern come completely down and then have the pockets match like so. And then I was gonna use something to offset all this pattern by um, adding um, a decorative piece like this but I still think that's too much pattern. So I'm probably gonna look for a blue or maybe even that. Mm, not crazy about that. So probably a blue. Now this came from the eight by eight, eight by eight cut aparts. So I think I'm gonna use this one over here and this one over here. And I chose these for their size. There are also some other elements that you could opt to use. And one of those is the chipboard. Let me show you what I mean. Or sticker. Um, we could use um, these, any of these stickers, or I like these chipboard tags as well. 
just to kind of break it up. Now I really like the You're Invited um, because of the way the colors go and these just look like they're going to get lost. So here's the two that I would choose, one for this and one for that. So I'm going to look at these cut apart a little, um, a little more closely and then make a decision there. But for in the meantime, I want to find what we're doing with the rest of the tag because that will help um, us decide what we're going to use to make the break between the tag and the pocket. So I'll be right back. Okay, I got a couple more pages or papers trimmed out and ready to go. I went ahead and finished this one so you now know what it's going to look like. This pattern came from the 8x8 co uh, collection pack, yeah. So let's go ahead and finish this tag. And then we'll cover our pockets. Again, from the 8x8 collection pack. I'm going there. Now we are ready to cover our pockets. And again, that's we're pulling the same pattern in down here. I tried this side, but with these two um, geographic patterns, it was too strong, so I wanted something a little softer. This is where I would have really liked one of those collections that had just a word page. Um, in this collection, the one, the pattern in solid that's kind of like that has teacups. And it's, I still thought that would be too busy with this pattern. But like tea time written in all different kinds of font would have been fun. Okay. And they almost always have those in a collection pack. Okay, so for those of you that have been patient and waiting, I appreciate it. Um, but I also want to let you know the next up is um, Come One, Come All. And I've got a new idea for that. So I'm anxious to get started on that. I know it's funny I'm talking about that because I'm just building, building this one. I need to finish this before I get my head wrapped around that. But okay, so yay! We've, made, we've met a milestone. We've got all the A sides covered on this page and it's coming along nicely. I still am gonna do something here to break this setup. And now it's time to start looking at um, the uh, inside of the first flap. And then I need to uh, make some decisions about what I'm gonna do um, as far as holding this closed. So before we do anything too big here, I've got to make a decision so I know where to put my magnets. So what I'm going to do to help me remember that is to put a circle here and a circle here. That'll help prevent um, me from laying down a designer paper before I place my magnets. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll be back in a few minutes with the coordinating papers that go here. Okay, everybody, we're ready to do the inside here. And I went ahead and finished this side and we'll build this side together. So... We have our insert here, and then I put this decorative strip in the middle. This cream paper is from the Patterns and Solids. There's always one cream sheet in the Patterns and Solids. I don't use it often in the um, in the albums, but I, I do save them. So the ones I don't use, I, I pull aside and, and then use them later, you know, like in cards, or you can also use them to help you stretch your collections out a little bit if you need to. Okay, this is from the Patterns and Solids, and this is going to go uh, to line the pocket as well as this flap. And let's get this removed. And we'll go ahead and lay the flap piece down first. I, I tried to use this, but it's too yellow against... Um, against this blue it just didn't look right so that's why I pulled in the, the base cream because it's a much lighter color especially if you look at them side by side 
Okay, top to bottom, just making sure I've got a good border. I know that looks a little funny because there's something sticking out from the front. Okay, and then I just cut one big piece, then trim this to fit, and then this is what's left over. It's gonna get tucked into the pocket. So it's actually gonna be a continuous pattern. left quite the trail there. Okay, I just want to make sure I'm out of the hinge, and I am. Let's try to pick up any extra glue. I think I've got it. Okay, so there we go. So now let's set all this aside, and we're going to work on uh, the tag. So if you're not... If you don't have your tags cut yet, these are three and three quarters by seven and a half. Three and three quarters by seven and a half. And then I just punched my four corners. So the first thing we're gonna do is lay down the cream. And you can see there's some black trim, but I, I did, I constructed this a little bit differently so I wouldn't have to cut and color block. And you'll see that in just a minute. I'm putting a very light layer of glue. The cream cardstock, since there's no ink on it, is a little bit thinner. So if you've got thick squirrels of glue, swirls of glue, it sometimes shows through the paper. So I just made sure I put a very thin uh, lines of glue. Okay, there we go. Mine feels smooth. This one turned out nice. So we are gonna do some piecing. So we're gonna use a blue strip, a black strip, and then this, which came from the eight by eight collection pack. So this is one of the cut aparts from the eight by eight collection pack. We're gonna layer this on top of the blue, and then the blue on top of the black, and then we're gonna add it to the center here. And it gives it a nice little detail. Oops, goes on the blue first. So I'm not I'm not marking it, I'm just visually centering it. Okay, now these two pieces are gonna get layered onto the black. So the this one's pretty easy because it is just the width of the pattern. So you're just cutting that strip out. So that's pretty straightforward. It's getting laid on top of a half inch strip of the solid blue. And then the solid blue is getting laid on top of a 5 8 inch wide black piece. Okay. So now I'm going to test it and see how it fits. It looks like it's going to fit fine. Yeah, looks good. I've got a little bit of overage here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that off by hand. If I can find my scissors. And then I'm going to ink that real quick before I lay it down. So you don't see that bright white sticking out. And I need to ink that in too. I don't know why I ink the sides but not the ends. Okay, I'm going to give that a second to dry because um, the ink will transfer onto the cream <clears throat> pretty easily. <clears throat> now the next thing I'm going to do is find my center line. So this is seven and a half inches. So it should be three, three and three quarters. We'll check that three and three quarters three and three quarter yeah so if you don't have um, a zero center ruler you're going to come down three and three quarters it's a little hard to see because I've got these 
um, holes cut out, <laughs> so it's a little hard to get my eyes on the right line. Three and three quarters. And this makes, this is important because I'm gonna just use this and put a little dent in my paper. Um, that's gonna help us line up the uh, strip in the middle. Three and three quarters, three and three quarters, okay. Okay, I've just got two little notches. You can barely see them, and they're going to get covered up, so it doesn't really matter. So we're going to use those two marks to help us place this piece. And those two little dots, since they're center line, it should be we should be placing the center of this on that edge. And I'm only going to the edge of the cream. since we already have, oops, that's not right. Oh, gotta get that up before it makes too much of a mess. Let's see, three and three quarters by three. For some reason it, it uh, shifted on me. There we go. Okay, so that's our two inserts. So let's bring the page back in. Make sure those edges are down. Okay, so you can put a nice little photo here and here. Okay, so we've got the B sides of the first flap and pockets done. So now we gotta start working on this. So I need to go organize my papers and I'll be back soon and we'll start working on the inside. And I also, the last piece is we're gonna put a belly band in here and I have to decide how wide it's gonna be um, and what it's gonna be. I've gone back and forth um, between using a solid um, color or using a pattern. So that's one option. What's the other option is this. And I kind of like this because it pulls this back in, these two edges back in. So we'll see. That's one. And that's two. So I like both of them. So I got to think about that a little bit. Um, part of the reason I was thinking about doing a solid because I was thinking about putting a sticker on here as well. Okay, so that's it for now. I'll be back soon. We'll um, get the belly band uh, measurements out to you, get that installed, and then finish decorating the inside. Okay, back soon. Okay, everyone, I'm back. We're gonna finish up this page, page one. Um, I've got a couple of details that I wanna do on the front, and then we still have the inside to cover, so we're, I'm almost there. Um, oh, I just, just realized something. Okay, so these are from the Cut Apart. As you can see, they're very small. They're from the 8x8 collection pack, and I put chipboard on the back, and we're going to mount those. So just so you have this for a frame of reference, this is two and a half inches wide by three inches, two and a half by three inches, but it really you're just looking for something that's visually appealing. And yeah, there's a lot of pattern going on, so I want to sort of draw your eye to a focal point, so that's why I've decided to add this element. And if you are a graphic fan, you know that's Pretty consistent they have lots of activity in their collections visual activity okay so that's gonna go here and then we're gonna add it up here I said page one this is page two page two page two sorry 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 page two okay so we're going to Place it, I think, right about there. I'm, I don't like it that low. I think that's it. Okay, so I'm going to... Looks like about two-thirds.
Okay, that looks good. I like it. Now I'm going to take my ruler and just rest it against the top of this, and that's gonna be my aid for placing this piece. Whoops, I put glue all the way to the, to the top. I didn't mean to do that. That needs to be glue free. So that needs to dry a little bit. And we want glue from here down. Otherwise I'll wind up gluing that, um, the insert, the tag in. Okay. that a little closer to me. I'm looking too far over. Okay, that looks good. Okay, make sure it's not sticking to the tag here. And now, um, we had, last time we were together we did the inside and we did the insert. So now we go down to the bottom. So um, these are all from the 8x8 collection pack. And what I am going to do, I think, yeah. I think I'm going to split this in half and then I'm going to put a half inch blue strip in the middle so that when this is closed, we see this blue strip. And um, I like the way that looks. Um, the alternative is you see this pattern peek through and it's kind of it's a little messy I like it I think this looks cleaner so that is what we're gonna do so we're gonna split this piece in half oh, let's see actually this is split in half and that's gonna work out right just right because this was inset a half inch on the 10 inch panel so that means from here to here is nine inches. So that's eight inches, this and this, and then a half inch here. So I think we should be good. Let me see if everything is trimmed right. Yes, so let's ink this. Perfect. Almost done with page two. So I'm going to want to find the center line. And then the last thing is we need to add some magnets. I kind of went back and forth of whether I needed the magnets, but I do. I think I do. So it should be four and a half. both sides. Okay, I'm going to use these two tick marks to place this on the center, like so. I do know. So these panels actually are a little wider than four. So these, yeah, I had split this. So I used a total of three of these patterns. Now this needs to be split in half. One, four. Okay. 
So I'm going to dry fit these real quick. And oh, that's bigger than I thought. Hmm. Should have been nine, it's eight, eight and a half. This strip should be an inch wide. Oh, there we go. So I am going to find another piece of blue and um, make that strip wider. Sorry about that. I, I miscalculated. I'm going to see if I can get that up. If not, I'm just going to lay another piece right over, right over the top. It's mostly coming up. Not taking too much cardstock with it. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to make a one inch strip. There we go. I had originally planned to put a belly band here and I'm going to abandon that idea because I don't have anything to cover the insert. <laughs> so even if this was a belly band I wouldn't have anything to put in it. Um, so I'm just going to make it a panel for a large photo. I'm like why did it, this doesn't look quite right. Now I remember. How did I do? Looks like it's sh a skew. Four and a half. Oh, that's, that's good. Okay, now we're going to dry fit these. Nope, those are the side panels. We're going to dry fit these. And these will need to shape down just a tiny bit to get it out of the hinge and to give us that nice separation. I'm sure you guys are shouting at me, put your magnet down, which I will now do. <laughs> I almost forgot. I got to move quick so my glue doesn't dry. Okay, I think I did it. I think I can get it on before the glue completely dries.
Okay, this is ready to go. Whoops, that's not what I was going to do. I was going to alternate the pattern. Good grief. Let's see if I can do it. Nope, I don't know if I can do it. Nope, I ruined it. And I think that's the last piece I have. I was going to use this side because this is a lot. So I'm gonna have to set that aside and make a new plan. Dang it. Gosh darn it. This, this goes here for sure. I'm gonna have to look for something new to put there. I meant to alternate it. Uh, and if I can't alternate it, what I'll do is definitely put some sort of a color block so you just we don't have the continuous pattern. <laughs> Sorry, it got hot in here. too high. <laughs> well, that's not true. This is the warmest room in the house. Okay. Man, I just had a wave of panic that I was putting this all in upside down. <laughs> That's awful. Okay, so we are going to have to use this pattern because I monkeyed it around and put it down wrong. So what I'm going to do to break it up is I'm going to put some additional blue strips in here. And yeah, I don't know if I've got anything other than blue strips. Let me check. Okay, blue, but they're pattern blue. 
So that's going to solve our problem. Then I'll trim this down and trim this to fit and we're all done. I'll try not to make any more mistakes. I'm at my limit here. Okay, ink it. I've only got about six inches of this blue left and I want to use it on my spine so <laughs> I begrudgingly was using it for this but I think it looks nice. Okay so now we're going to check the measurements for this, trim it down. As soon as I find my pencil, here it is. If I haven't mentioned it already, I love my new paper trimmer, the Roto Trim. It is awesome. doesn't want to nudge much because of all the caked on glue. But there we go. We recovered. I knew we would. Oh, thank goodness you guys were shouting out me about the magnet. I must, otherwise I might have messed up. This needs to be trimmed off a little bit more. That should do it. Oh, I didn't tell you, this is three quarters of an inch wide, three quarters of an inch wide. But it's really just, I wouldn't even do this if I had um, alternated the pattern uh, in the first place. So that was what the plan was. Um, and this is what we wound up with. And I like both, um, but I wasn't planning on doing it this way. This album is not for the faint of heart. Um, there's a lot going on. And you're going to love it or hate it. And I'm prepared for the comments, so let them rip. Definitely um, more interactive elements than... Uh, and kind of unusual ones in my in my most albums. Although you may have noticed that my graphic tends to be a little bit more complex than Stamperia and Chalbella because it lends itself to layers because they always have the patterns and solids. These the other two um, brands are a little bit harder to layer without it just looking mucky. If that's a if that's a thing. Okay, I marked it and now I can't see it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay, 
I marked it crooked and I and I needed to. I wasn't sure. I cut it straight. It's easier to go back and cut that slight diagonal after you verify. Ever so slightly, and that should do it. Hmm. I want to thank everybody for participating. I had put a poll out in the community section asking if people would be interested um, in doing a retreat someplace in California in the spring. So I appreciate you guys participating in that. We've been kind of off and on about doing another one because uh, two things, really. Um, one is... We stay pretty busy um, anyway, um, but the other is this COVID stuff, um, you know, and not really wanting to travel or go through all the effort to plan something and only to have it canceled because we can't get together for state reasons. Okay, there, finally. We are finished with page two, page two. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. Talk soon. Got our magnet here and our magnet here. Doesn't feel like it's grabbing very much though. I wonder why. I'm gonna check it. Yeah, there it is. Maybe they're not lined up. Something's wrong. Oh. Yeah. I don't know how I got that so far off. Is there another magnet? It slid on me, so it's not lined up with this one. Or did I forget to put a magnet on this? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. I think I forgot to put a magnet on this side. That's the magnet um, that's holding this together. I think I forgot to put one on this side. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just horrible. Yeah, because this is exactly on top of this one. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to nudge that down. Um, I think it'd be easier to adjust this one down to line up with this than the other way around. Hopefully it's going to be on the same polarization, but I'm going to do that offline. So there's a lot of weight on the page anyway, so it's going to stay closed. It's You're only going to see these um, fall when you turn the page over. So this is page two, so it's gonna go this way. So the one that doesn't have a magnet happens to be down anyway, but don't be a dummy like me, get a magnet. See you soon.